Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and we're going to be going through the data analysis for part two of our force, mass, and acceleration lab. The purpose of this part was to determine the relationship between mass and acceleration while keeping the force constant. So let's go ahead and look at some data. I have my data here in Excel, slightly different format than last time, just to show you guys that your data table can be of your own design. I have my mass data, my force, and my acceleration. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to convert my mass to kilograms because newtons, we know, are in kilogram meters per second squared. So I'm going to convert my masses. The easiest way probably to do that is to just create a new column for it. So I'm going to go to the right of the column that I wanted to create and press insert. That's going to create a new column for me, which I'm going to call mass kilograms. Now, to convert grams to kilograms, you go equals. Oh, hold on, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Nope. There we go. Okay, so to do my new calculated column converting my grams to kilograms, I'm going to go equals. Take this and divide it by 1,000 because there's 1,000 grams per each kilogram. Okay, And then you can go to the lower right and just click and drag to drag that formula down. Sorry about the bell. So now I have all of my masses in kilograms and I'm ready to insert my graph. So I'm going to zoom back out, click off of my data so that I can go insert, and hopefully Ooh, it inserted a bunch of funky data there. You know, we're just going to go in and delete that. So I'm going to go select data. It thinks it knows what I want. It does not. And I'm just going to remove everything that they put into my graph so that I can add the data that I want. Okay, I want my x-axis to be my manipulated variable, the one that I changed. In this part of the lab, we changed the mass. Okay, in our y-axis, the variable that we were looking at the response to, so that would be the acceleration. Okay, so I have my force and my acceleration data. Okay, now you might be able to tell right away that that graph does not look linear. Okay, it has a nice curve to it. Um, it looks like, as again, remember, on my x-axis is my mass of my system in kilograms, and on my y-axis is my acceleration in meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Okay, so as my mass increases, my acceleration decreases. And we can see that, but it's not quite linear. When our data isn't linear, there are a couple different things we could try. We could look at inserting a trend line. Zoop. Trend line and go into more options. Okay, it'll automatically do a linear, and if we show the equation in the R squared, we see that it's 0.94. So it's not terrible, but also not exactly what we want. Okay, what if I try an exponential? Okay, that's a little better, 0.99. We can look and see what all of these different ones would look like. Okay, normally our polynomials are always going to look pretty good, because um, they can be set to fit any data. If we look at our power function, we have this negative 1.2 up there, okay, and a 0.9988 um, R squared value. That is one of our hints that this might be an inverse relationship, okay? Now, for an inverse relationship, we can linearize the data, okay? This is the thing scientists do to try to figure out the relationship more directly. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my manipulated variable, my mass in this case, to be the inverse 
of the mass, okay? Because this looks like an inverse relationship right here, okay? If you remember from geometry, that is kind of what an inverse graph looks like. So I'm going to move this graph out of the way, and I'm going to create a new calculated column. So again, right click, insert a column, and I'm going to call it inverse mass, which will be 1 over kilograms for the units. Now. Again, it's inverse, so equals 1 divided by the mass, enter, okay? and we can go ahead and bring that on down. Excel also does calculator dump. Let's go ahead and control those decimals so that they are reasonable and match the sig figs of our mass. Okay, I'm going to go out to there, and now... I'm going to try graphing that. So, insert a new chart. This time it was good and gave me a nice blank one. Go to select my data. And instead of my plain mass values, I'm going to put my inverse mass values. Okay, And my Y values is the acceleration. And look at that, okay, that looks like a line. Let's go ahead and check it. Let's put in our trend line, linear, okay. Go into more options and display the equation and the R squared value on the chart, 0.9997. I think that's the right function, okay. Let's go ahead and add all of our axis titles and things like that. Okay. This trend line will be the inverse mass versus acceleration. On my y-axis I have my acceleration in meters per second per second or meters per second squared. On my x-axis is my inverse mass which is in units of 1 over kilograms, or kilograms to the minus 1. Okay. Uh, we can think about the slope and the y-intercept. This one's not super small, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Um, that might have something to do with something. Okay. Let's see. If the mass is 0, or the inverse mass is 0, do we expect the acceleration to be 0? Yes, so we could actually set, uh, nope, not the trend line label, the actual trend line. Let's see how it changes it if I tell it to set the intercept equal to zero. Yeah, that line just doesn't look like it fits my data quite as well. So I'm going to keep it with the y-intercept. Okay, and you might notice something about this slope here. Okay, the slope on this one, let me zoom in so you guys can see it. Oh, too much zoom is 0 0.297, 0 0.29, 0 0.30. That is awfully similar to something else in my data. Okay, so what does your data look like? How's your slope look? Um, go ahead, uh, get that done, and we will be discussing what that slope represents and some of our sources of error in class on Wednesday. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.